Hello and welcome back and that is right today we are going to talk about how to reinstate video station on a NAS that has DSM 7.2.2. The latest update from Synology has changed a few things. It's introduced a bunch of security fixtures which has got a lot of bug fixes there in the background but unfortunately one area of contention that has arisen is the fact that it removes video station. Now before pursuing this guide um, I'm going to tell you straight away this will allow you to not only add a video station back onto a NAS that has DSM 7.2.2 but also there'll be little guides and updates on exactly how to re-enable supported codecs and compressions on the system throughout the course of the guides that I'm going to be referencing. However, we need to top load this video with a quite significant disclaimer. Number one, what you're going to be doing today will involve you having to make your way into your network attached storage device and play around with a little bit of code and this is always not without an element of risk so I do not advise doing this to anyone who doesn't really know what they are doing secondly even though for example on this NAS here we can make our way in this is the NAS I used for my previous video for the SM 7.2.2 installation and talking about the changes even though video station isn't on here it does seem to me that there's been so much negative feedback on some of the changes in DSM 7.2.2, particularly on more affordable budget in NAS systems that perhaps will struggle under a third party app like Plex, that it would not surprise me if Synology maybe you turn on the decision regarding video station. So that is another reason why you might not want to proceed with this guide. Notwithstanding that you are going to be playing with certain settings on the system and going in via the command line, but also that I believe Synology are either going to U-turn on video station or that they are going to amalgamate it into Synology photos in some way or at least give it a stay of execution. But let's proceed with the walkthrough. So in order to proceed with the installation of Video Station uh, back onto DSN 7.2.2, we're going to need certain things. Number one, a lot of this guide is made possible thanks to 007REVAD, Dave Russell here. We're going to be doing some collaborative videos with him very, very soon. Already talking to him. Sorry, Dave, if you're watching this, I am going to answer those emails. I do apologize for my delay. But... Um, this is what we are going to be utilizing as the base for installing Video Station. And we're going to need to download uh, source code for Video Station. So go ahead and download this zip folder here. Stick it in any directory, but make sure you keep track of where it is. The next thing you're going to need is a means of command line. Now, you can use Shell and stuff like that if you're using Windows. But I personally like to use Putty. You can download it. It's completely free. And Putty allows you to in, uh, interact with your nads on the command line via the network. It also allows for a lot of easy copy and pasting methodology I do recommend you do it on the Synology NAS itself you will need to go into the control panel and this is where it gets a little bit dicey you're going to need to go into this option here terminal and SNMP go in there and enable SSH service I cannot stress enough that you need to disable this after you've reinstated video station and also keep in mind that further updates to DSM 7.2.2 will almost certainly invalidate this installation so this is very much a short-term solution but go ahead and enable SSH but just remember to disable it after you've reinstated video station Next up, head into the file station application of your Synology NAS and pick a directory. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the home tab there. And what you need to do is find that file that you downloaded earlier and the source code file and dump it onto the Synology NAS. Upload it. It's a very, very small file. And as you can see, it's done. Then you need to extract the file. So extract extract the file directly into this directory. This is the, what we're going to be looking for later on. Next thing we need to do is head on to Putty. Now go into Putty, as you can find it here, and enter the IP of your NAS, 192.168.1.105 in my case, but it will differ depending on your own system. Remember, this is significantly easier if you're going to conduct this operation here on the local area network. Enter that IP, the one that's up there, go ahead and click Open. Authenticate it, and from here, enter a super user um, admin login here in Putty. Let's full screen that a little bit here so we can see what we are doing. 
Next up, we need to find exactly where we installed this source code and feed it into the command line editor. So once again, if you head over to Dave Russell's article here, what the uh, command line we've got as an example here that you can use, but you will need to edit is this one here. Go ahead and for convenience sake, open up a notepad document and copy it into it there. We'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it. <clears throat> but what we're looking to replace is this part here. So go ahead and just get ready to replace that. Now go into your own NAS, go into the extracted folder that you uploaded earlier on, find the 722.sh ending file, right click, click properties, and what you want to do is copy the entirety of this section here. So go ahead and go all the way up to the beginning of video station there, including the slash. Go ahead and copy that now. Come out of it there, go back into the notepad doc, and as you can see, this is our new directory here. So what we need to do is copy that and replace everything from volume all the way up to that slash there. So now we've got the location of, and make sure it is a single line here, the location of the source code for video station. Now I head back into PuTTY, and then from there, get ready to right click and if you're using another command line editor, you can paste, but don't control V it. You can just right click and it'll appear here and then click enter. It will ask you to reinstate your password. It may also remind you that what you are doing is a super user. And again, Synology may well reintroduce video station at a later date. So you may not even need to do this. Only do this if you are desperate and you've upgraded to 7.2.2, but you need access to video station again. Go ahead and enter your password. The keys will not appear in PuTTY, but they are being recognized, and then click Enter. As you can see, it is now installing Video Station here in the background from that source code. It's installing the Advanced Media extension, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. Let's extend that down there. And as you can see, it's now accessing the APK and directives from Synology and bringing them in. Now, this may not work in the future. Synology may well block this. Or, moreover, as I mentioned earlier on, Synology may very well reintroduce Video Station at a later date. But as you can see, it's now going to download it in the background. I've got quite a... Uh, restricted internet connection where I'm doing this recording. Right now I'm doing a different video utilizing Proxmox on a series of different systems. So consequently my internet connection is a little questionable right now. As you can see now on the desktop user interface video station is now available and heading into the package center on your Synology NAS will allow you to go ahead and install video station just like you would before. As you can see, we'll go in, we are still running DSM 7.2.2 while it does this in the background. There's DSM 7.2.2 and it's going ahead and installing it like an absolute charm. Now, there are a few extra things I want to add to the tail end of this video while the installation takes place. Number one, it's worth highlighting again that this has been made possible thanks to Dave Russell here and I'll link to um, his full GitHub and he's got a huge range of different applications and services and patches that you can choose to use. So go ahead and support him if you can here via paypal or via buymeacoffee.com and again we will be doing further guides and tips and little workarounds with dave later on this year and hopefully there will be some exciting ones to come but i do recommend checking out his entire backlog of wonderful command scripts that he's been working on next we are going to go kind of dig in a little bit more into DSM 7.2.2. We're going to take a little bit of a break while we go to Berlin for IFA. And we've already done a bunch of things, and Eddie's done some stuff in the background. And I do recommend checking out, again, friend of the channel, Space Rex, who has not only talked about the impact of DSM 7.2.2 on Synology Photos, but he is also working on his own video station video that I recommend you check out. He is very, very close to 100k subs. Please, please head over there. I'm looking forward to seeing what he does when he crosses that line. But... As we head back into the Synology now, as you can see, Video Station is finishing up neatly. Um, other things to keep in mind, Eddie's done a full article here that links to all of the resources that we talked about today. And there is talk uh, and extra bits and bobs about adding uh, Video Station FFMPEG patcher there and adding on other little bits and bobs as well as re-enabling HEVC playback and support of HEVC playback where possible utilizing Synology's own uh, advanced media codec. Again, head over to Alex Presto for FFMPEG patcher there to add some of those other featured services there for multimedia playback. And if you go over to um, uh, 
Dave Russell. I keep calling him Dave Russell. He's just known as 007 Revad in my head. So I have to keep correcting myself uh, for a, f a better breakdown on enabling HEVC decoding via the Package Center and Advanced Media Extension. Some people have reported difficulties and issues they've encountered with regards to HEVC in the latest DSM 7.2.2. This will resolve some, but not all. And there are still other workarounds being discussed online. And before we forget, remember, when you are in Putty to safely exit Putty by typing the word exit and exiting it safely and go into control panel and please, please, please disable SSH services there. Because remember, SSH is not something you want to leave open for, a, you know, an attack vector to come in and bugger with your data. And again, I cannot stress this enough. I know some of you think I'm being a worry wart, but... Synology may well reintroduce video station in the future. Additionally, what you are doing here is not part of what Synology support on their services officially. So by doing this, you may well render your system in a, in a way where it might, you know, you might brick it if you do things wrong and Synology may not support you. So it's really, really important to understand the risks in what you are doing by reinstating video station on a Synology with DSM 7.2.2, at least right now at the time of recording. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you on the next video. There are links to the guides and walkthroughs linked uh, in the description below. And again, stay tuned for other videos coming up soon, along with Space Rex's video on Video Station as well. But this has been how to re enable Video Station on DSM 7.2.2. Go ahead and make sure you've got the advanced media extension installed and you will need to go ahead and install that patched version as well. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this and otherwise I will see you on the next video.